So you went out and got yourself one of the new flashlights that uses the 26800 tube. Now all you gotta find is the appropriate battery. You finally find yourself one of these 26800s and you go, I got this, only to realize it doesn't fit in your charger. The X-Star SC1 Plus is here to save you. If you've recently picked up one of the flashlights that uses a 26800 tube, you know how difficult it is to find the battery, but it seems like it's even more difficult to find the charger that's long enough and can charge fast enough. There was a few chargers on the market recently, like this Yanni, but this thing overcharged up to about 4.25 volts, and so I discontinued using it. That's just not safe or good for the battery. Let's take a look at what comes with the XTAR SC1 Plus. And let me also state that this is a new version of their other charger, the SC1. So if you're looking for it, please make sure you get the Plus. The SC1 might still be available and it's not long enough to fit the 28600s. So you get a charger, you get a cable, you get a little strap to keep the battery in. And in this little card spot here, in the middle of the card was a manual tucked away. So look for it in there. It's pretty straightforward, so you might not even have to consult the manual at all. This is a three amp charger that will fit anything from an 18650, 21700, all the way up to the 26800. The build quality is nice enough, but I wouldn't say it was overly built. If you compare it to the Yanni here, this Yanni has kind of a lightweight, kind of cheesy feel to it. And I would say this is a slight step up from that. You can even notice in the specular reflections from my video lights that this is kind of a rougher plastic and this is kind of like a little bit more dense. And also the spring here, can you hear it's kind of grindy and over here, it's, a, it's more smooth. So I don't think that when you pick this up out of the package, you're gonna go, wow, about the build quality but it's good enough, and if you drop it, it should sustain a fall without cracking. There's two ways to use the SC1 Plus. You can use it as a battery charger, and in that case, you take your battery, slip it in, and then you take the supplied cable, you would attach the USB-C side to the top here, that's the charging port, and then you take the USB-A side and plug it into any USB-A power brick. And you'll see that the indicator is cycling upwards, indicating it's charging. When the battery's full, the lights will fill up full and stop blinking. Now the other mode is a power bank. And what you would do is you take the supplied strap and you just apply it to make sure the battery doesn't flop out when it's like in your backpack or something like that. You would obviously have this battery fully charged and ready to go to use this as a power bank. Then you take the supplied cable and you would reverse it and put the USB-A in the bottom. The A on the bottom is the output. So you'll go like this. And I've got a little USB tester here and we'll go ahead and plug into the USB-C in port right here. Now, one thing I noticed about this charger and I'm glad it's doing it right now, is sometimes when I plug in, the device doesn't see it at first. And then what I do is I unplug it and then plug it back in. And look at that. Now it shows the current battery level and it shows that the device is on and functioning. All right, let's talk about charging performance. So if I'm using an Apple iPad brick here, which is rated at 2.4 amps, and I use the supplied cable, so I'll go ahead and plug the cable into my tester so we can see what's going on, and plug the other end into the USB-C in on the top of the battery. It starts charging, and we can take a look at what the tester says, and it says we're getting about 2.5 amps. So this Apple 2.4 amp charger is actually putting out a little bit more than it's rated to do, about 2.5 amps, and so that's, that's great. But this device also supports up to three amps. So if you have something that's capable of three amps, like the XTAR USB wall adapter that has Qualcomm 3.0 quick charge, we can plug into that. So I'll unplug this, unplug the Apple charger, plug in the XTAR Qualcomm quick charge 3.0, then I'll plug my tester into that. 
We see it's charging again, and we can see that it's gone a little higher. If you decide to get the SC1 Plus as a kit with the charging block, note that it's a pretty good one. If I press and hold here on Auto Detect, we'll see all the different protocols that this block supports, and you'll see it supports Apple 2.4, Qualcomm 1, 2, and 3. So it supports all the high amperage modes you would need to charge the batteries the fastest possible. It's worth noting that the charger also works USB-C to USB-C. So if I take a USB-C to USB-C cable and I plug it in like this, you'll see that it also charges at the 2.8 amp rate. All right, so the charger's been charging for about three hours. That's about how long it takes to charge a battery up from empty. And you'll notice that the final light is the only one blinking. This charger is now under 0.2 amps, and then you just saw it drop just drastically there. Notice that the last light is now fully lit. That indicates it is in standby and that the battery is no longer charging. And when we're at 0.012 amps, that's just how much the charger takes to just monitor itself. Let's go ahead and pull the battery off the charger here and measure its final voltage termination. And there we go. And we have 4.17. And I've noticed that the charger terminates at 4.17 for me every time, which is the same voltage I read with my SkyRC MC3000 when batteries come off it. This SC1 Plus has become my new preferred way to charge my 26800s. I used to use this janky kind of uh, metal plates with a vise kind of thing to hold it and connect it to a different charger I had, but this is much more reliable and convenient. I want to point out that XTAR has this on their website for about $9, the charger, what a steal. And if you need the wall adapter, you can get it as a kit and they'll give you this Qualcomm 3.0 quick charge for about $8 more, so a total of $17. So not necessary to get this unless you don't have a 2.5 amp or higher charger. If you've got one of these you know, iPod uh, larger bricks hanging around, this could be used instead but if you're going to use a normal port off your computer or something like that, you might only get two amps or even as low as one amp. So thanks to XTAR for sending this to me for review. And honestly, I'm going to have to pick up another one. I got enough batteries in my lights that if I want to charge them at the same time, I can't wait on just one SC1+. Thanks for watching my review, and I'll see you in the next video.